to the show. We got a special guest, Coach Douglas Esposito, and let's get started. All right, so Coach Doug, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come see us. So we'll start it off with, uh, how did you get your start in martial arts? Um, so I wrestled. That was probably my first martial art when I was very young, probably like, I'm trying to think. I think seven or eight um, and then uh, I got a paper route when I was like 10 and uh, which was not legal but oh well uh, I had a, I had a kid that had working papers you know you had to, in, it was upstate New York you had to have working papers and uh, so he would go and collect and I'd go and deliver and he you know he took 25% I got 75% which was good because I didn't get an allowance, so I needed some cash, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but the last stop on the on my paper route was a dojo. Um, it was karate, judo, and jujitsu, um, mostly stand up, a little bit of um, like takedowns and wrist locks and that kind of stuff. Um, and that was uh, my first, you know, like I said, the first wrestling, and then. Uh, I really got into the the karate and judo and and uh, at that place uh, my it was Sensei Hadiochai, uh, Japanese uh, gentleman who grew up in Japan and came over to go to college here in the states and um, started teaching after that and uh, was a very, was a local fixture there at the uh, so very lucky um, I remember the first day that I I walked into the place I kind of like to tell this story because it. it and you've all walked into you've all walked into a place like this, a mat room, uh, a gym, a dojo, a dojang, whatever, where people are really doing work, and it's hot, <laughs> and it's sweaty, <laughs> and it hits you right in the face, yeah. right? And I still get goosebumps thinking about thinking about that because it was like like I just like that that sensation, that smell, that temperature, that everything was just like. Man, this is this is where I want to be. This is this is something going on. Because when you're seven or eight, you don't really, you know, the wrestling's not the same as when you're in high school. You know, you go into the mat. My, my mat room in high school, you know, was like uh, like Coach Dollar's place up in. Uh, did you ever train there at uh, yeah, yeah, racquetball court. at the racquetball Coach course? Coach told me horror stories. Yeah, about that. The, where the walls school. just sweat, you know. But but uh, <laughs> but that was the first place at about ten years old that I walked in and I was like, wow, this is, this is what hard work and dedication smells like and feels like, and it was just palpable in the air. And so I trained there, um, all through until I graduated high school and went off to college and then trained, you know, Muay Thai and other, other styles and, um, uh, found grappling and, uh, trained no gi a lot when I was out, out on the West coast. Um, I was in the Marine Corps. So moved around a lot and uh, trained with a lot of different people. So been lucky to be exposed to a lot of different things and, um, and have the benefit of learning from um, different technical approaches and also different philosophical approaches. Right. So it sounds like you've had a, a very long journey through martial arts and, you know, through that process, you know, you get different rankings, different belts. And they all mean different things to, to everyone. So out of, you know, your long journey, what has been the most important promotion or belt promotion to you? My yellow belt in karate, <laughs> because that was the first, that was the first promotion. Right. Any, you know what I mean? Like if I hadn't made yeah. that, there would have been none of the others after that. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So. What are some of the biggest challenges you face as a coach versus being a student? Um, so as a coach, so as a, as a student, I really like to compete a lot. Right. And as a student, you can focus on yourself and focus on your training and, uh, and not really have to worry about what everybody else is doing other than are they helping me or are they not helping me. Right. Um, so as a coach... You really, your focus has to be on the other, 
on your, your students, your members, your, your athletes. Um, it's so hard to give them everything that they need and do a good job at that and still take care of yourself to be an athlete, to compete. Um, now, understand that, that that also coincides with getting older and not <laughs> healing as well. And, yeah, and so it, I'm, 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 I'm 47. <laughs> So when I get banged up or I get tweaked or something gets funky, it's like it a six months, a year sometimes <laughs> before things, I'm, there's never a time I'm not working around something, you know, you. and it's fine. I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, like I, I see that as it's like, you, you know, an inoculation, they give you a little bit of the sickness right. so that you don't get sick. You know, so it's like, okay, I'm a little banged up, but I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I'm not, you know, uh, obese. I'm not sitting around on a couch. You know, I'm yeah. doing doing pretty damn good for 47. I feel, feel you know, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay for that. So it's just that, you know, you got to you gotta give to get a little bit. So you get a little, uh, little uh, banged up. And, but so get back to the question. Uh, it's just really hard to do... Um, to do right by your your athletes when you're still focused on yourself as an athlete, and I think that uh, you know if, if if you're just a part timer, that's fine. Um, but once you decide, you know, like for for me, I, I I can't focus on me. I have to, you know, I have to I have to look at what's best for my athletes. Right. So we're. Um, possibly moving here in a, in a year or two to a new building and so we're designing everything about that and I'm but I'm trying to sit down with all the athletes to get their input because certainly I have my vision of what I think it should yeah. look like but I want to make sure that it's serving them because they are they get way more use out of this place than I do so it's Absolutely. it's got to work for them so that's the that's kind of you know from the training aspect the training has to work for the athletes you know especially in the ones that would are looking to compete themselves now too. Yeah, yeah, and I, and that's that's where I kind of that that's I, I guess I made that distinction for you in the question oh. in that you know what's the difference between being an athlete and being a coach? Well, an athlete competes. Right. Okay. So whether it's and I and because when I was an athlete, I competed a lot. Right. That's that's how I look at it. Now you don't have to compete. You know, obviously we have a ton of people here that don't compete, that this is their lifestyle, it's their tribe, it's their, you know, their thing to get out of the house, be healthy, learn self-defense, gain confidence, get all those benefits that come from doing this stuff. Um, and that's fine too. That That's obviously, that's easier to balance, you know, like that, that's, that's way easy to balance because those guys come in twice a week, you come in, you train, they're here for an hour and a half, you have a great time, whatever, but the athletes take... So much more. They're here every day. They need this. They need that. Uh, you know, they need their 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 tummies rubbed. Their this that and the other. You know, like it's they might as well put a cot over in the back for them. Yeah, uh, we have. So. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's it, if you're really gonna if you're gonna coach at a high level, it, it's very difficult to compete at a high level and coach at a high level. It's I, I, I I've, I've seen. Very few people be uh, successful at that. Um, generally, they do their thing, and you know they may, you know, it's like so they may do some masters brackets or some seniors brackets or something like that. But that's that's not like you know going and facing Hodger Gracie in the finals at the Worlds or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know? not quite the same. Like that's no. that's uh, that, and that was that was one of the concessions that I kind of had to make. Like I don't I don't think I competed in the masters. Back then, you had a choice, and I, I know Megaton's been competing. Uh, in the adult forever, you know. I don't. Is, has, he, has he started doing masters yet? I'm not sure. Okay. He, he. I mean, he's he's legendary for that. But I, I don't think I did masters until I was like forty two or forty three, because I was just like adult, 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 adult. I wanted to push, wanted to push, and so that was kind of one of the concessions where I was like, okay, now I'm spending more time coaching. I've got to focus more on my athletes. When I do train to the level that I feel I need to, I'm tore up. I'm injured. So I'm gonna finally admit that I'm getting a little bit older and, and fight masters. So, I mean, I, I think, I think you can fight masters at like 35 or oh, wow. something like that. It's pretty low. I think, pretty yeah, easy. it's pretty, uh, but I mean, there's, there's different categories like masters one, masters two, masters three, or seniors. I don't know. They keep changing it, but yeah. So that, that's the, that's the challenge. And, and it's nice now that I've kind of accepted that, 
all right, that I've kind of accepted the coaching role and been, been like, hey, this is this is what I do. This is who I'm here for. Um, it's a, it's a lot easier to really focus on the athletes and, the, and, and my members. And I still get, you know, look, I, I still, you know, anytime I'm on the mat, I got a stack of, you know, 18 to 55 year old dudes and girls trying to rip my head off. And you know what I mean? So it's like, that's the other thing too, is when I first started the school, I didn't have as many guys to push me. Because I, you know, I was like right. everybody was even. I mean, even if they wrestle or they whatever, they didn't have the depth. You know, now we've been here ten years, so you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how much you guys roll with Christian, yeah. but he's, <laughs> you know, he pushes yeah. me every time, man. I love it, and, and he, and we can be technical, and we don't have to try to kill each other, and I'm always going to be challenged by him. Um, all of my brown belts are that way. A lot of my purple belts are that way. Some, some of my blue belts and white belts are just tough. You know, and it's like, man, I just gotta, I gotta protect myself and keep my arms in, because they'll just try to rip it off and take it home with them. You know, so I have plenty of, I have plenty of challenge, plenty of challenge with my students here. So that's, that's, that's also in, in analyzing it, that's made it a little bit easier to step back into coach mode, because people be like, hey, don't you want to compete? I'm like, you see that guy? He just took gold. See that girl? She just took sil double silver. See that guy? He just took gold at the advanced new breed and this, this, and this. Yeah, roll with them every week. I'm good. I'm good. You know, like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, all, it's all good. So that, it, it's, um, you know, but yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to be a coach, be ready to be a coach, you know? Well, speaking of tournaments, so I heard you got a new tournament system. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, um, the BJJ Battle Royale. I got a, we did a couple of. Uh, I, I guess it started. Um, it started with. I was fed up with tournaments, with all the. The, the bracket thing. All the issues. Like, I mean, you name it. There's the, you know, there's a whole list of objections. Why don't you compete? You've heard it. Too expensive. Yep. Takes all day. Yep. One and out, yeah. you know, yeah. like, I mean, you, 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 I've got a list of them that are, so I was like, man, how do, and, and I do a lot of research on like habits and, you know, behavior modification and the, working with, with, with athletes and just regular people. Cause you know, we do CrossFit and right. weightlifting and all, all sorts of other stuff here too. Um, and you got people trying to get their weight under control, get their body image or trying to build, you know, trying to do some sort of body composition. So what I've seen is that if you want people to be able to do something, you've got to make it easier. If you make something easier, then people will do it, right? So like oh. apples, as soon as you start cutting up apples and putting them in a bag, people will eat way more apples because they're cut up and they're put in a bag, right? How yeah. many apples will yeah, you sit okay. there and eat yeah. if it's cut up in a, because yeah. yeah, it's, 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 I mean, how, su how silly is that, you know? But right. it's such a big deal, like, yeah. oh, apple chip, no problem, you know? <laughs> but when you got like this whole big apple and it's like, eh, yeah. and it's not, it's such a minor thing, but you'll eat a lot more apples if I put a if I put a bowl of cut up apples in front of you than if I just put two or three apples out there. You'll most you're gonna eat is one unless you have like super hungry or got an apple thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so um, so we had all these objections, and I so I. I you know, whenever there's problems like that, I always feel like, okay, well, if there's solutions, then there's an opportunity to make a better situation for people. So okay. I said, well, why are the tournaments like this? Well, they got to have, you know, they're, they're renting a, a school or an auditorium or they're, you know, they're, there's, there's all these uh, expenses that goes into run it. So you got to have like minimum, you start doing the projection, you got to have like minimum 200, 250 people just to break even, 300 people to make any money, you know, and that's, that's tough and, it, and it's expensive. And, you know, so, so how do we go about, well, what if we, you know, I just, I feel like the, the tournaments are about the tournament and not about the athletes, right? Yeah, so like the tournament does it to support itself, not to, yeah. give the athletes a chance to do I mean it, it, I'm sure they are I'm sure people want to but it's like man we got to do you know three minute white belt matches four minute white belt matches just to crank and turn and burn and I'm like this is ridiculous like it's not you know you got so many people just going to an advantage or going to points and not really having time to put their game together and, and really you know and how many how many people do you know that have gone to tournaments hey I got first prize 
how first place, great. How many matches did you have? Two, Two. or one? Yeah. You know, oh, I had one. Uh, or, or I lost. What happened? Well, I was the only one in my bracket, and there was a guy in my bracket above, and he was heavy, so they combined the brackets, so I fought a guy that was 50 pounds heavier than me. Or, That's not going to be cool. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so, so how, do we, how do we get, a, you know, how do we fix these things? Um, so the... That's how it kind of started, and I wanted to. I needed some efficiencies to make things work: the registration, the bracketing, the scorekeeping, all that kind of stuff, right? Because with a regular table, you need a scorekeeper, you need a timekeeper, you need a ref. Like, how do we make this more efficient? How do we make yeah. it? Um, so we built the the software, and we've done the beta. Um, we're still working on. Um, uh, there's there's a list of things to make it a minimum viable product, and then we'll go out and we'll we'll take it to more people. But we ran a couple of tournaments here, and, and it's there. There's two parts to it. There's the software, which is the BJJ Battle Royale, BJJBattleRoyale.com, and anybody can use it to run a tournament. They can register as a tournament organizer, tournament organizer, post the tournament on there, right, and then. Um, there, man, I wish I had a chart of everything that's going on here because <laughs> because there's there's uh, referee certification. So once a referee is certified, they can they show up in the system as being certified. There's scorekeeper certification. Once the scorekeeper is certified, they show up in the system. So if you wanted to run a tournament down at the lab, you know, if Coach Chad was like, yeah, cool, we're on a tournament down here, um, you could sign up as a tournament organizer, organize it, find refs that are available, contact them, say, hey, I got this tournament. They'll be like, sure, no problem. And then you can assign them to that. So you got the refs that you need, you got the scorekeepers you need. Um, the nice. the athletes, if you competed on, you've competed in that, right? Yeah, I did one of them. So you saw, you, you register, you make your profile, yes. and then it keeps track of all of your matches, basically in real time. As soon as your match closes out, it's updated back on the website. So there's, there's, the, there's the website, there's the database, and then there's the app. And the app is used by the tournament manager and the, the refs to run everything. So we've got it so that it screencasts up on the TV. So when it's time for your match, it comes through. You know, it's a lot. We could do a whole podcast just on, the, on what's going <laughs> on there um, and, and show the technology. But, man, everybody that's used it has been really, really, really wild about it. From the athletes to the the refs and the scorekeepers, it's just it's easy. You know, the scorekeeper keeps time and score, and the bracketing's already done. Once everybody weighs in, you push a button, make your divisions, bracketing's done. There's no pencil and paper. Um, if somebody's running multiple mats, they can look, they can see, okay, these matches haven't been done. This one's in progress. These red matches haven't been done. This blue match is in progress, and these green ones have already been done. And it moves everybody through. You can do single elimination, wow. double elimination, um, submission only, timed, um, IBJJF style. And like I said, the scoreboard shows pictures of the people, so you don't have to have your ID you know, necessarily to show, if, you know, right. the, like the higher level. When you go to IBJJF, you have to go to compete, you have to show your ID at the table when you go to check in and everything. But if they right. if you got a, a picture of you up, then that kind of yeah, gets rid of right that. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and it's cool. I mean, it's just it's just a better experience for the, for the athlete. You don't have to be here hours early. You show up, you sign the waiver if you need to sign a waiver, you weigh in. You know, once everybody's weighed in, it takes – like two minutes to do the brackets. So you don't have to have night before weigh-ins. There's not all this, this craziness. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Like I said, everybody that's, that's used it has really liked it. I thought it was awesome. um, it's a little yeah, slow. It it's a little slow getting out of the box. I'm a little frustrated with that. But hopefully, like I just, we've got to get these tweaks in the software done. And once they're done, then we'll have a really good product and we can take it out to get the shop around. Fine -tune it just a yeah, I mean, they're, they're not, it's just stuff like being able to turn your picture. They were little, little things. You <laughs> yeah, know? Just being able things, to change yeah. the color of the gi. Right, if somebody's wearing a different color gi, being able to change that, oh, right, stuff like that. Yeah, oh, that's cool. yeah. That's so cool. just little little yeah. things like that. That as we tested, we're like, oh, we gotta we gotta kind of unscrew these things. So yeah, yeah. We had pictures coming up sideways. We don't have it set up. So, right. but that's such a that's a minor tweak. It's not a big deal. But yes, there was right. there was about I don't know twenty or twenty five of those things that they're working on, and yeah. as soon as we can get those done, I I, I want to schedule some more, um, uh some more tournaments for the, for 2017, do a series, you know, do, do at least some, uh, a gi series and a no gi series and see how it goes. Yeah. 
I think the uh, tournament system, the tournament system you have, I think it's amazing. I mean, the first first time I had any exposure to it was at Dan House and Master Dollars. Mm-hmm. Yep. Could not believe how efficient and fast it ran. I, yeah, I thought like, they still two. had more time in the tournament. They was like, oh, no, we're done. I'm like, it's only been a few hours. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, we're done. I'm like, I'm not used to that. I'm used right. to showing up at 10 o'clock, not mm-hmm. leaving until 8.30. Yep. Yeah, those two came back from that, and they were just... Oh, so, all over the place. Yeah. So that's so. that. That's the other half of it. So there's the tournament management system, website, database, app that's used to run a tournament. And then there's the format that we're running, the Vanguard Battle Royale, right? The BJJ Battle Royale is for everybody and anybody that wants to use it. Right. The Vanguard Battle Royale, we're doing, and we didn't invent this. It's been done before, but the first half is submission only. Whatever, whatever the match is, but the minimum six. White belts is six minutes. Right? Blue belts is seven minutes. Purple belts is eight minutes. Brown belts, nine minutes. Black belts, ten minutes. So you're getting the full IBJJF time that you're supposed to get. But the first half is submission only. So that gives you a chance to push your pace, get your game off, make a mistake, and not have to worry about being in a bad position. Right? right? Because you're not worried about the points. At the halfway point, even if it's in the middle of a transition... Points are on, right? The scorekeeper, points are on. And the and the, the ref will tell the, the, the athletes, points are on. And then, okay. so it's points for the rest of the match. I mean, you can still submit the guy or girl, right. but now we've at least got something that's going on. So if there's going to be advantages, there can be advantage. Anything that's, we basically do an IBJJF, you know, like, let's face it, IBJJF is the standard. So all of our, the referee training is to IBJJF standards. We're not an IBJJF, um, uh, you know they they know about it. I got there's some people there looking at it, um, but it's not sanctioned by the IBJJF. It doesn't make you an IBJJF referee, but man, it'll give it'll give you all the knowledge of everything that's there. So that's a whole total. That's BJJRefTraining.com. That's a totally different site, but it's all connected and 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 uh, it's all connected to to that. So the 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 tournament format is pretty cool too people really like that because they could get in and go for some stuff and if they made a mistake or they missed it no harm no foul and then just you know you saw people adjusting to the format very quickly like looking at the clock oh only 30 seconds things start to <laughs> tighten up you know the first half of the match things are wild and wooly those last 30 seconds before the second half right. we tighten up we settle into our position and then we start moving from there but it's only points that are scored after so if you start you know mounted when the time goes on, there's no points for that. It's, oh, right. it's anything that you go that you accumulate going forward. Okay. So you'd see people trying to set themselves up for okay, I, I don't. There's no points. There's no whatever. But if I hold this position for another 15 seconds and then I can transition, then I get the points after the time's on. You know, so people yeah, yeah. people adapt, uh, adjusted to it very quickly. Yeah. It, it changes your strategy a little bit throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it just gives people like, you know. People are so guarded because they don't want to lose an advantage. They don't want to give up points. So that's having that first half free, yeah. you know, and, and it, I think we got a lot more submissions because people were willing to go for stuff. You know, people weren't worried about getting in a bad position. They could focus on that that real goal of the jujitsu, which is the submission. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, then, and then if that didn't work, then they could get back to their positional game and accumulate some points and, and still win, you know. Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's really that. awesome. That's incredible. So questions I have been training for like six years now. I think my first time actually meeting you, I came up when Christian Anthony and I first started trying to do a Big Brothers competition team training. It was like the Sunday trainings, training. right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I was a blue belt at the time. I walk into the school and I'm like, I'm just looking around at all these guys on the mat. Christian's giving me to run through. Okay, this these are do's, these are don'ts. I'm like, okay, awesome. I got it. And uh, just seeing everything that you put together here. Was, was incredible. Seeing the school, it was beautiful. The level of the guys here, I didn't make any assumptions with anyone that I rolled with. I, like, you, you come in, it's the same thing as going to Master Dollars. You roll one of the white belts and blue belts, you might get your head taken off. <laughs> you're not paying attention. It's, it's pretty bad. So I'm walking in, I'm looking around. It's like the first time I met Reed. Uh, so I actually, I need to... to Reed see doesn't look like much at all, man. No. He's like, you know, you, you look at him. At, we had, I had a guy come in yesterday and he was asking me about the guys on, there was a sparring class and he, he was a Thai boxing guy and he's interested in getting back into it. And I was like, look, you know, you got Aubrey's, I think three and O in MMA, you got a couple Muay Thai fights. 
I said, Reed over there, he's like 7-0 in MMA, got a couple more tie fights. I, I said, I know he doesn't look like much, but he's, you know, he's <laughs> he's definitely, um, you know, been put through the ringer and back and, and, and comes out on top. But, yeah, they're, they're, and, they're, and they're good guys, man. They're really, they're like, that, I, I just like that they're, they're, they're good people, you know. It was an awesome group of guys you got here. I remember, the first thing I remember after meeting you was the first time we rolled. And I've only been stuck under a few people that had that level of pressure. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laying on the bed. I'm like, okay. And I, and I instinctually, I don't know why I did this, but I reached up and I tried to pull you down. Mm -hmm. And I remember you going back and Because you were out. new. Yeah. I was like, man, I don't know what's going on. I just know that he's really, really heavy. And this doesn't feel good. <laughs> I remember you going back and talking to me after the fact you were breaking down the match, the mistakes that I made, helping me correct that. And I immediately went and applied that. Since then, I don't think I've ever reached up around the back of someone's head when they put me in soccer control. Okay, it's good. always get away, get away, get away. <laughs> and I stopped and I thought about that. I thought about the conversations I've had with a lot of the big brother black belts on the team and just seeing you guys and how successful you've been with your schools. So I guess my question would be, when did you first know or first decide that you wanted to open your own academy? Um, back when I was doing, back when I was at uh, Sensei Ochai's, uh, doing mostly the karate and, and judo jiu-jitsu stuff there. Um, I, that was kind of um, from when I was very young, like, man, I want to have my own dojo. This is super awesome. Like, it's such a, makes such an impact on people's lives. I probably was like, I don't know. 14, 15, you know, and I was like, this would be cool to, to do. Um, it wasn't a goal for a long time. Like it was like before I knew how being an adult, how hard being an adult was and having a job and making money and <laughs> starting businesses before I knew how hard it was. I was like, man, this would be really cool, you know, but then I went to college and I went to Marine Corps and I went, you know, did, did different things. And, uh, and it just took me a while to to get to a point in my life where it was a where it was a an option, you know, where I was like, "Hey, I think I'm going to do this," you know. And I, I helped uh, I helped Chad with some of the programs down in down at the lab. Um, I think he started up down there at around 2002. I think I started training in 2002. Um, he had just come down from New York. He had been with Henzo and was a purple belt under Henzo. Um, so I found him. And uh, we, we, we were training and uh, taught some MMA and Thai boxing classes there and everything. And then um, when Jeff was opening up his school in Arlington, um, helped Jeff with his school. And then I was teaching at Dallas and I just kind of had this epiphany. I was like, man, I'm, I'm helping all these other guys with their schools and it's great, but I'm older than all of them. <laughs> and I've been doing this for a long time. Like maybe it's time to go back to my goal when I was 15 of having a school. And, uh, so that was, you know, I, I had a training company. I'd just gotten out of the Marine Corps. I had my training company. I was doing that. I was contracting and I was like, you know, I, I'm not going to get a better time than this. So I was like, uh, let's do that. And that was about 10 years ago now. That's awesome. Well, something else that, that always gets me, we get brand new students to come in and everyone wants to know why we do what we do and, and everyone has a different reason you know you got you know we covered it a bit while we were talking you got the guys that didn't want to compete you have to have competitors you got the people they just want that that social experience they want to have a healthy lifestyle some people just do it for fun but if you could sum it up in your own words what does jujitsu mean to you So, well, no, I, I think I can do this. Um, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, man. It's a good question. So, it's pretty loaded. In, uh, in, in, in Japanese, there's do, like karate do, judo, and it, it means way or path. It's a, it's a path or a way um, of challenging yourself physically, challenging yourself emotionally, challenging yourself uh, spiritually, challenging yourself mentally, like, you know, developing all these things. Um, 
uh, Kabuto, you know, Budo, the, the way of the warrior, right? That kind of thing. Um, my Western version of that, that's kind of the Eastern version of it, the Western version of that and that I talk about, and I feel like everything that we do here is a meaningful pursuit. And a meaningful pursuit is something that gives you an opportunity to develop physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, however you want to say it. Um, but, you know, that tri- going back to that triangle model where you're able to develop on all of those. And not only are you able to develop, but you're able to help other people develop. And you can be in a level four tribe where you're bringing each other up and you're all building each other up. Um, it's not a zero sum game. And uh, we can chat. The, the nice thing about jujitsu is that we can challenge each other and we can face each other and give 100%. And nobody's cut in half at the end of it, right? Right. You, yeah. You know what I'm That's saying? Like nobody's yeah. cut in half after it. Um, hopefully nobody's busted up too, you know, too long. People say jujitsu is the gentle art. I say bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that calls jujitsu the gentle art has not spent a lot of time on the mat with Coach Kelly or Coach Dalla or any of those guys, right? There's not a whole lot of gentle about it, right? And uh, so for me, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, it's a meaningful pursuit where I'm able to develop, um, develop and challenge myself physically, mentally, you know, emotionally. Um, it, it develops your problem solving skills like nothing else because you're learning problem solving skills under duress. Right. And yeah. when do you really need problem solving skills? Under duress. When under you're duress. under duress, right? Like, you know, to be able to think through while well, somebody, I mean, basically while well, somebody's, I've heard somebody say this the other day, practicing murder on you, right? <laughs> while well, somebody's, well, somebody's practicing murder on you, they, I mean, they're, they're basically trying to choke you unconscious unless you tap and then you get a, yeah. then you get a pass, right? Or trying to break your arm or rip your shoulder out of its socket or whatever it is. Um, being able to stay calm through that and be like, okay, I need to trap the hand, I need to trap the foot, I need to bump my head, to have a plan and be able to execute the plan in a stressful environment, you know, that's, that's physically engaging, mentally engaging, you know, you hear people talk about jujitsu like it's chess and all that, and it, and it is, yeah. it's human chess. Um, so to have that, that opportunity to grow in all of those spaces and then help other people grow by either being a good teammate and helping other people train or being a coach and, and, and running that training, uh, it's just, it's super rewarding. Like I just, I can't think of anything, uh, you know, that, that's, that's more rewarding, you know, seeing somebody go from being a, a five-year-old kid coming in here to, um, you know, we, well, we haven't had anybody make it all the way to black belt from five years old yet to, you know, to see kids, um, come in and just have, you know, have some issues and then, you know, join the Marine Corps and get their lives together. And, you know, I mean, Reed, Reed was this video playing or video game playing pear shaped, you know, little <laughs> doughy kid, man. I mean, he was, he, he weighed more, he weighed more when he first came in at like 15 than he does now, you know, and now he's, he's a police officer. He's, you know, like there's, there's just so many, um, there's so many successes for people. And, um, and, you know, this is only part of it, and, and it's always very humbling when people attribute, you know, people say, oh, man, my, my son's the focus, the, the, um, the discipline, the confidence, you know, uh, you know, part of it's also, well, he was four when he came in, he's nine now, so that's part of the, the, the but um, I know what a difference it made for me uh, to have you know, be wrestling and doing martial arts growing up and to see that just time and time again with, with the kids, to see that time and time again with, with adults, to have people be able to challenge themselves and, and have that meaningful pursuit and to challenge themselves and grow and be involved in a tribe, you know, with, with, with you know, and that's one of the things that I love about the Big Brothers is, you know, sure, you have your, you have your tribe at your gym, you know, but there's also the tribe of tribes, the Big Brothers, you know, you got... 
you know, Coach Dollar's place and Kelly's place and Chad's place and here and you know, the, and then there's even the extended, you know, Mike Moses and Luke and all that. And you're you're welcome at any of those schools. You can go change, you can go train and, and challenge yourself, and and they're your 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 teammates. And even further than that, you can go to just about any jujitsu school, and people are going to receive you very well. I've traveled all over the world and trained in you know Japan and, and the Far East and and Brazil and uh, Peru and all these different places and you know there's this there's this brotherhood and this tribe of tribes where people just you know hey if you need anything you need a ride you need food you need some place to stay whatever people are always very uh, opening because they know that you share that work ethic and that bond and that you've sweated and bled and and uh, pushed yourself and I find people like that very that's who I like to hang out with People with a good work ethic, people that push themselves, people that want to grow and be 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 more, you know, and 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 make their lives better and make the people's lives around them better. Um, so jujitsu, you know, is, is a, a way of le- way of life and a, and a the vehicle which I choose to um, be connected to other people through, you know, and and the Thai boxing and the CrossFit, everything that we do here, man, you are able to push yourself. Every day in different ways, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, if that's how you see it. Um, and that's, what's better than that, you know? If you're looking for a beast of a water-cooled gaming PC or just a simple desktop PC to browse the web, and everything in between, such as home theater PCs or storage PCs, Spectral Tech can help. We're local to the Fredericksburg, Virginia and surrounding areas. For any questions, we can be contacted by email at info at spectral-tech.net that's info at spectral-tech.net. Hey, I'm Coach Douglas Esposito. We're here at Vanguard Gym. I'd like to introduce Christian Banghart. He's one of my brown belts. He's been working on this technique and uh, been making it pretty effective. He's got some good details, so we're going to share it with you all. Chris is going to run you through all the, the details. Cool. So we're going to be working from the single X position, but I'm going to show you guys how to use the lapel to kind of anchor the position down. Can I ask you to stand up for me? So coach is going to be here. I'm going to be in the shin to shin guard. I'm blocking his far ankle and we're just going to say this lapel is out. If not, it's going to give me a little bit of time to get a hold of it. From here, I'm going to hug his knee, pulling it in towards my chest and I'm going to shoot my leg through in between his legs. As I do that, I'm going to fall to my hip and I'm going to start to elevate Doug's leg here like so. From there, my shin comes in. I pull past his leg, my heel's in. A lot of times, this is going to off-balance people. This is going to give us some time to take this lapel. Once I get my shin up, I can drop my leg, pass, and come right back over here. It's still just the single X, but I'm using the lapel here to kind of anchor down this position. One of the problems with the single X position is if guys know how to block the inside and outside hook, It makes it, they'll try to jump over to the mouth. This really anchors it down and keeps them from being able to advance the position and gives me a little bit of time if I need to stall and run the clock. (laughs) One more time, we're going to the If I can bring you back a little bit. So in here, he just happens to have his lapel out. I've got my grip here like so. I'm going to pull his knee towards me and I'm going to shoot through. Sorry, I didn't give you a warning the first time. You're good, you're good. I know what you're doing. Here, I'm going to elevate his leg here like so, and I want to get my shin in. I'm going to generally shoot to secure the single X position first before passing this lapel. Even though I'm going to drop this leg and go to here, I always start here first just to make sure I can get here. Yeah, if he starts defending, that's fine. I pass here like so, and this is going to give me time to reach in, control this grip if I need to, like so. Now, I've got a couple of options here. For me, I'll generally just work the sweep, basic sweep, reach over. You guys can see that right there. I'll pass this lapel again here. I'm going to block his ankle here like so, hips in, and twist here like so. Ooh. 